the Blennerhasset Hotel. Colonel William Nelson Chancellor, then mayor of Parkersburg and a businessman, constructed and developed the Blennerhasset Hotel for the affluent of the time. The hotel was a stunning showplace that exuded the allure of the period. The hotel's exterior is designed in the Victorian Queen Anne and Romanesque revival architectural styles. When it comes to hotels, it was a leader in the state. The old hotel featured nearly 50 guest rooms built around a central stairway, which was impressive for its time. The common area, as well as the two double parlors, were on the second level. And a stand-up piano could be seen in one. The restaurant, which was situated on the second story, could accommodate up to 80 people at once. Due to the history of Harmon Blennerhassett, an eccentric Irish gentleman, and his links with the Parkersburg region, the hotel was given the name the Blennerhassett. The hotel first fell into disrepair in 1979. Around 30 senior residents were residing in the hotel at the time on a short-term lease unit arrangement. A fire broke out on the second level of the 4th Street side of the building, on the evening of May 9, 1979, and quickly spread. The fire was luckily put out before it spread to the fifth story and threatened to devour the entire structure. In another tragedy, the First National Bank of Parkersburg was previously housed in the hotel's library. A truck allegedly missed a turn and went directly into the bank entryway, killing a lady who was in the bank to make a deposit. It required a group of donors to restore the Blennerhassett to its former glory, after it was destroyed by fire. A group of Parkersburg residents, joined forces with Pennsylvania-based businessmen in the early 1980s, to take on the hotel refurbishment project. The second major makeover, which cost more than $7 million, was undertaken in 1985 and 1986. Today the Blennerhassett is open for business, and is considered one of the best hotels in Parkersburg, it is reported to be the oldest hotel in the state. There are reportedly at least 13 different ghosts who have been identified, but there is believed to be more. The atmosphere of the Blennerhassett Hotel has been compared to that of the Stanley Hotel in Colorado, where the movie The Shining was filmed in the 1970s. The spirits enjoy deceiving the hotel personnel in the ballroom, on the first level with their ghostly hijinks. When preparing the ballroom for a particular occasion, the table arrangements are frequently altered, and items go missing, only to reappear in obvious areas. Once a microphone was set up after the personnel were readying the space. Howdy gentlemen, said a crackling woman's voice over the microphone at that point. The story of the man with the bowler hat is one of the most well-known ghost stories at the hotel. The individual has been observed in the basement's dry storage area, and in room 409. The hotel staff believes the ghost is linked to the nearby Kaltnecker building which was built by businessman Johann Kaltnecker. During the 1985 makeover, the hotel purchased the building and incorporated that section of it. Room 409 is the hotel's only two-story suite. Guests who have stayed in the room have reported hearing furniture moving about at night, in addition to seeing the bowler hat man. One attendee said that the bowler hat man tried to restrain her in bed by her neck one morning. The hotel's entrance facing 4th Street, has been said to be haunted by the spirit of a lady. In 1889, the door served as the entrance to the gentleman's cigar stand and smoking area. The door according to the personnel, is not used anymore. An employee at the hotel claimed she saw the ghost while walking to her car late at night. It was around 3 p.m., something flashed across the street, and it made me look in the direction of the door she said. So I came to a halt and noticed a woman staring at me. She saw the lady twice in a week and now stares in the window every time she walks by, but she hasn't seen the ghost since. She described the woman as having a brilliant head of red hair, and a white expressionless face. The woman wore a bright blue outfit with a frilly long collar, and a brooch, which she claimed indicated she wasn't from this era. The hotel is filled with the blood-curdling screams of a lady. This occurs frequently in the library, but also in the ballroom. Nobody knows why the ghost of a lady is screaming so frantically. Some believe it is the lady who was hit by the truck many years before. The hotel is also haunted by the ghosts of children. 
They were initially observed laughing in hotel rooms, before spinning the toilet paper dispensers as the workers were cleaning. The maid saw impressions of children's footprints not just on the comforter, but also on the ottomans at the foot of the bed after making them. The most unusual appearances of the children's spirits occur over the holidays, when they may be heard singing over the hotel's piped-in music. Jingle Bells seems to be the most popular tune among the ghostly children. The woman in white is another ghost. She is dressed in 1920s and 1930s attire. This ghost usually wears a white hat that covers her face nearly completely. She wears a white fur trim jacket, and a white mid-knee plain skirt. The woman in white is generally observed hurrying toward the elevator, and appearing to enter it. She had previously been requested to hold the door, which she seemed to accomplish. No one was in the elevator when the man who asked entered, but her lavender aroma was still hanging in the air. The elevators frequently stop on the second floor for no apparent reason. It is reported that her presence is sensed frequently. The smoking gentleman is another ghost that has been seen in the hotel on rare occasions, although most guests have only reported smelling his cigar smoke. Witnesses describe the ghost as a man in his 60s, dressed in a three-piece gray suit whenever he appears. The scent of an old-fashioned cigar is always there with his ghostly apparition. The smoking gentleman's ghost is most frequently seen on the second, and third levels, as well as in the lobby. Witnesses to the apparition, allege that the ghost at the hotel is that of the property's builder, Mr. Chancellor who died in 1909, they base this on his portrait, which is in the hotel library. During the 1920s and 1930s, there was a bustling newspaper stand at the back of the hotel. There have been sightings of a small newspaper boy, dressed from those times at the lower floors of the hotel, near the break room, and more rarely, in the kitchen, throughout the previous few years. He wears a hat, and carries a newspaper bag with a strap across his shoulders. Employees in the kitchen often sense someone tugging on their clothing, and when they turn around, they find the newspaper boy demanding attention. In the hotel's bar and restaurant area, a sea captain has been seen in the mirrors. He's also been spotted in the lobby's enormous mirrors as well. It's worth noting that the mirrors were made from windows, and doors from a demolished New York City apartment building. Others have said that the sea captain looks like Harmon Blenner Hassett, the Irish gentleman who founded the hotel in the 1800s. Some people think that ghosts are occasional bursts of uncontrollable psychic energy, generated by unsuspecting humans. Others think that ghosts are non-human spirits, who manifest in conjunction with other sorts of hauntings. As you can tell, the Blenner Hassett Hotel like other haunted buildings, has a variety of ghost psychic manifestations, the most common of which may be found in the library. This contains vintage books, overturned chairs, and a footstool with the cloth pulled up into a tent-like shape. In the library, people have reported being touched. So what do you think of the Blenner Hassett Hotel? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, please like and subscribe.